So I'm going to talk about Earth's impossibility theorem. And I'm going to divide this talk into three parts. First, I'm just going to give you an example of the theorem. The second thing I'm going to do is to give you a more formal statement. And lastly, I want to give some uh, possible solutions or discussions of the theorem. Now, the example is quite simple. Let's assume you have three people and you have to decide on whether you want uh, a swimming pool or uh, a library or you can uh, have a bike lane. Now, person A prefers the pool, then the library, and then the bike lane last. But you also have person B and his preferences is pool second, library third, and bike lane first. The third person, C, uh, prefers uh, pool last, then library, and then bike lane. Now, if you want to find out the general will of society, if they're going to vote on this, what they want to build, let's say you start by voting between pool and library then pool will win because A wants pool more than a library and B wants pool more than a library. So pool will win and library is out. Then the question is whether you want pool or a bike lane. Well, let's again look at this. You have a bike lane about pool here and you have bike lane about pool here. So bike lane will win. So eventually then you will end up with building a bike lane. So that sounds like the general rule of society. Now the problem is of course that if you start with a different voting process, let's say you start by choosing between pool, a bike lane and a pool. And we know already that the pool will win. So we cross out bike uh, cross out the pool and we select bike lane. But now we choose between bike lane and the library. And it turns out the library will win because person A wants a library more than a bike lane and person C wants the library more than a bike lane so this time the library will win so the general rule of society it just depends on the voting process there's no unique general rule of society here and that's a general example of the of a more formal problem that we call um, Harris impossibility theorem so the specific problem I explored here, the example, is something sometimes called the Condorcet paradox. But the more formal problem is, the, is what we call Harris impossibility theorem, which says that under certain conditions, a voting system in which you rank certain alternatives will not produce a unique alternative or unique solution. So what conditions are we talking about then? Well, there are four key conditions here. First of all, you have to assume that you want a voting system which has the following f four characteristics. You want the voting system to ha be what we call first Pareto efficient. And this simply means that if all the people want something, we want the aggregate also to, to favor that alternative. You want the solution of the system to be that uh, alternative. Now the second uh, condition is something called unrestricted domain. This simply means that um, all kinds of preferences are allowed and we want the system to produce a unique answer regardless of what kind of preferences people have. They could have library, pool, whatever. It doesn't matter. The order of it and the kind of preferences. The system should always produce a unique solution. The third condition is um, non-dictatorship. This simply means that there is no one person who will always determine the result of the election. You can't put all the weight on one person and say that his, his, his one is going to determine the outcome. The fourth uh, condition is maybe the most um, strange one, or is the independence of independence of irrelevant alternatives. Indep 
of irrelevant alternatives. This, this means that if you have two alternatives, say x and x is preferred to y, and x is preferred to y by all people, for example, and then you introduce this, uh, another alternative, z, or you, you take away another alternative, z. Now the introduction of an, another, another alternative, like z, or the reduction of the set of possible alternatives, should not affect your preference between x and y. So if I prefer x to y, if I introduce z, or if I take away z, that shouldn't change the, uh, the preference set here, in the sense that I shouldn't suddenly prefer y to x then. This should be stable. So an, an irrelevant alternative should not matter once I have a preference there. Now, given these four conditions, if you want the voting system to have these four conditions, error proves that it is impossible that a ranked voting system will just vote on different alternatives will, will satisfy all these four conditions at the same time. That's impossible. And that's kind of a uh, very surprising result, people said, because, you know, we in general believe that, okay, we just vote on something and then we find a general will of society and we'll do that. No. Technically, it's impossible. There's no voting system that will always satisfy these four conditions. Now, this sounds a bit harsh, and it is, because there are some solutions to this problem. Um, and some of the solutions are, for example, first of all, what if you could measure the intensity of the preferences? So in a voting system, you can only say, oh, I want to pool more than a library. But if you could actually measure to what extent people want to pool more than a library, then you could solve this problem. Then you can reveal more information, and you can use that information to solve the problem. Of course, it could create some other problems. For example, if you measure the intensity of preferences, then it might be beneficial for you to lie in order to get your highest preference. So you will say, oh, I want to pull you know, a lot, a lot, a lot compared to a library or bike, even if, not, if that's not a true preference, in order to get a pull. But in general, if you introduce intensity of preferences, you could solve the problem. Which leads to a second solution, which is almost like introducing intensity of preferences, which is um, log rolling. Basically, people can bargain. Uh, so if suddenly something comes up that you care a lot about, then you say, OK, I'm, I'm going to vote for your library if I get the bike lane later on, things like that. And log rolling like that is almost like measuring the intensity of preferences, because you can vote for something you don't care that much about in order to get something you want. Um, so that could also solve the problem here. Uh, a third thing that could solve the problem would be what if you could um, what if you have preferences that are single peaked and by that I mean a preference which always goes up so there's no in between so for example when it comes to funding for schools you would tend to think that more is always better if that's that's a single peak preference um, you always want more. It's not like you. Okay, I I, I would prefer to have. Uh, I do not prefer to have very little. Then I prefer. Uh, I do. I prefer uh, more a little bit. But then suddenly I, I don't want more. No, it it is it's a single peak preference. It goes up. Um. So so that will solve the problem as well. A fourth thing that could solve the problem. Um, it's not really a solution, but it's more a practical thing that this, the, the, the theorem only says that this problem might exist. It doesn't say that, you know, that the voting system will always give you this result. So you could argue that the probability that this actually will happen, that you will have a problem here, could be small. So a small probability. Remember the theorem only says that I can't be sure that all the four conditions are satisfied, but most of the case maybe it is true that it's not a problem. So for example, if you have a lot of voters and only a few issues, many voters,
then this problem is unlikely to exist. Now, some people will say, okay, so this kind of solves the problem in a democracy. Well, it does to a certain extent, but then again, a lot of decisions are made in small committees in which the problem comes back up again. Now, the fifth solution, I think, is to argue, well, this is not a problem. Why? Well, if a lot of people prefer both a bike lane and a library, then it doesn't really matter if you, if you build a bike lane or a library. A lot of people will prefer it. So it's not like uh, suddenly this alternative that no one likes will win. So this may not be a big problem in that sense. Okay, but still, Arrow's Impossibility Theorem. If you know this, then you know that maybe you can control the outcome of a system by rearranging which alternative you select first. So if you really want the library, for example, you say, okay, just choose between a bike lane and the pool first. Then you will end up with the library. So by knowing this paradox, you could actually get what you want. But you shouldn't argue that you know, this proves that democracy is impossible or anything, because there are some solutions here as well, and it may not be a large problem in practice. But in small committees, it may be. Thanks.